most of our district. And for those of you that don't know, our district cuts all the way down the mighty Mississippi and over almost as far as Whitewater, up the beautiful Wisconsin River, not to include Point and Wausau, but all points, you know, uh, west of that. So really happy to represent you. Really happy to be in Madison. I'm a member of Chippewa Valley After Hours. We have three After Hours clubs in our district, which when they were first started, uh, were kind of a new model. And the idea was two meetings a month, no required uh, lunch, and um, a, a, a service every month and a social every month. And it turns out that more and more of our clubs are starting to operate in that way anyway. I'm part of that. So uh, it says unmute to start speaking. Am I muted? Um, you are. No, you don't. You can ignore that. Okay. Later. Yes. I'll unmute myself. Because you're on later. the big. So my oh. <laughs> Because I spotlighted your computer. Ah, yes, okay. So um, when I, um, hello Zoomers, I can no longer see you unless I turn, no, not even then, I can only see me, so that's, you don't want that. <laughs> uh, hello Zoomers, happy to see you virtually or be together with you. And thanks for everybody that came today and thanks Erin for the hostessing and uh, all the leadership, so. Um, when I thought about what I wanted to say to all of our clubs, all of the Rotarians who would be in the meetings, my first thought is how fortunate and what a beautiful opportunity is to simply be a Rotarian, yes. to be politically, <clears throat> psychologically, and even spiritually able to join together and want to live, what do I click? Mm. There we go. What did you click? So there's like, if you hover. Oh no, <laughs> learning new <laughs> tricks. Say, so Karen, don't you know how to hover? <laughs> oh, and how do I go oh, back? <laughs> they weren't working, but maybe they are. Should be okay. Very good. To be able to engage in a lifestyle that commits to the idea of service above self. Many of our neighbors and community citizens and world citizens are not able to make that kind of commitment. And it is my honor to join with you in Rotary Fellowship and Service with you, um, Madison South Rotary. So the reason Rotary is, exists is this, to provide service to others, <clears throat> promote integrity, and advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace. So when you read that, is that your reason for being in Rotary? Does that resonate with part of your why? And when I say these statements, do they resonate within you? I value fellowship. I value leadership. I value integrity. I value diversity. I value service because the extent to which our mission and our values are personal to each of us as individuals is the only measure of the extent to which we are a Rotarian. What we do, the action we take is a natural result of our owning mission and values as individuals. And when we do that, our service will have a particular kind of nature. It'll be generous, happy, free, and enduring. So Rotarians, be empowered. So I have two invitations to you from President Sheikh Armeta, our Rotary International President. But before I share them with you, did any of you, I can't see you Zoomers, so if you raise your hands, you can't be called on. Did any of you see Phil Mickelson win the PGA Championship this summer? Yes? We're on TV. Yeah, me too. <laughs> on TV. <laughs> 
So he has a relatively new caddy, his brother, and like all professional golfers, he conferred before each shot with his caddy about club selection, shape shot, what they want it to, what they want it to happen after it lands. And after they did that, his caddy said one word to him before stepping away. Commit. Phil is a very human golfer. He's easy to love. He does melt down. But when he believes in himself as a professional and then commits shot by shot to action, he plays like a champion. And he did something that nobody else has ever done. He won the championship at the ripe old age of 50. <laughs> and it's the same with us. When we believe in ourselves as individuals, as Rotarians, and commit to service, we serve like champions. And commitment by commitment by commitment, you light up Rotary. And Rotary lights you up. It's a virtuous cycle. The more we understand ourselves as Rotarians and the more we commit to service as Rotarians, the more we grow as Rotarians, the more we serve. It's a virtuous cycle. So invitation number one, each one bring one. So I actually purposefully avoid outcomes oriented actions as if I don't succeed unless I bring one. So I'm encouraging all of 6250 to engage with this invitation and a slightly different idea, with a slightly different idea. What service in sharing Rotary life out into your individual worlds makes sense to you? How can you share Rotary life? What will you commit to? So there's a wide range of actions, energy that it might take for meaningful service. And every single one of these actions, which are just examples <clears throat> along a range, are meaningful. None of us actually knows which service will yield the most. You might greet a guest to Rotary in a meaningful way, and they might be the next great thing for Rotary International. We're grassroots. We don't know where this <clears throat> energy and ideas are going to come from. So if you commit to service in a way that makes sense to you, in a, at a level that makes sense to you, not too much, not too little, but just in your sweet spot, you will grow Rotary. And you just, again, you want it to be genuine. So you might commit to engaging guests just going a little out of your way to cross the room to welcome a guest and ask a little bit about themselves. You might commit to being actively involved in the University Rotor Act group. You might commit to starting a new club. You might commit to um, inviting somebody into our new all virtual change makers club. But the key is that you think about what the meaningful way that you can extend a Rotary life is and commit to service. The second uh, invitation is grow more, do more. Both of these are sort of obvious, and that's why commitment isn't so important. So the Rotary Foundation has a problem. We are getting very good at global grant writing. Not only are we doing more, but we're doing better. Our grants are growing more sustainable, more meaningful, more um, innovative and attached to really good assessment. So um, we have more and more requests and the um, gifts to the Rotary Foundation are growing, but not at the same pace. So that's a pretty easy problem to solve. We can do that. The second thing is it is highly likely that we will declare an end to polio in 2026. No, cool. And if you haven't, yes. <laughs> Andy has given you the perfect, oppor perfect opportunity. If you haven't yet participated in End Polio Now, now's your chance because you don't want to sit back, back and not have been a, a direct part of it when we celebrate. <coughs> so there are all kinds of ways to give to the Rotary Foundation in case you're not giving now or you're not in your personal sweet spot. 
So if you're giving too much, pull back. If you're not giving enough, step in <coughs> so that Rotary lifts you up. So if you're not giving any, you can give as little as $10 through Rotary Direct. You might say, I'd be proud of X number given annually and give that, be true to your own vision. You might lead a polio plus fundraiser as many of you already have. And at the very far end, it might be your sweet spot, your place of service integrity to leave Rotary in, a, in your will at a million dollars. So these are just examples on a range. The key is that you find what right, what's right for you and, and make the commitment. So our Rotary uh, individual members matter and individual service matters, but it's not our vision. Our vision is what we do together. And we don't, our vision doesn't even include just Rotary. Our vision includes all our partners over the world. So the first half I just want to take a peek at is we see a world where people unite. 105 years ago, 2,000 people died of polio in New York City and another 6,000 were per permanently paralyzed. And the world was waking up to something new. 84 years ago, the artificial respirator, iron lung, was invented, helping people with the most devastating uh, symptom of polio, literally the inability to breathe. 54 years ago, Dr. Sabin invented the oral polio <coughs> vaccine, making it possible for lay people to administer the vaccine. And 42 years ago, Rotary got a bright idea. We wrote a global grant to, to vaccinate every child in the Philippines. And then we thought, well, why stop there? <laughs> 36 years ago, just 36 years ago, polio, uh, Rotary made a promise to the world's children that we would eradicate polio from the face of, this, of the earth. Three years after that, the World Health Organization joined us as a partner in our first ever privately funded global health initiative. 27 years ago, the Americas were declared polio free. 21 years ago, the um, Philippines were declared polio free. Just seven years ago, uh, Southeast Asia, India was declared polio free. And last year, Australia? Nigeria. Nigeria, but the continent of Africa. Africa. Nigeria was the whole that was declared polio free just last year. This year, we've only had two cases, one in Afghanistan and one in Pakistan. And according to the Global Eradication uh, Initiative, we are optimistic, not without being ridiculous, on continuing to be able to work in Afghanistan, which means immunizing and testing. <laughs> We also, thanks to the global pandemic, had a picture of what happens if we don't finish, which is expensive work. We had, depending on who you uh, read, between 140 and 200 cases. We had a spike last year because all um, efforts stopped during the pandemic, during the worst of the pandemic. So what it takes is no wild cases, and then three years of environmental uh, testing as well as continued uh, immunization in order to declare our job done. So that's about the best example of uniting for lasting change, <coughs> one can imagine. And our work in polio has laid the groundwork, the tracks for all kinds of global um, health initiatives. And um, many people say that when they arrived to do good work, they found Rotary. <clears throat> so together, just like we as individuals, the more we give, the more we grow, the more we give, the more we grow in our identity as Rotarians serving. That's happened to us as, as a group. The world has come to know who we are, a global network of trusted local leaders. And so it, it too is a virtuous cycle. So Rotarian, be collaborative. There are all kinds of ways to collaborate. Uh, Rotary not only has our mission, vision, and values, but of course we have a strategic plan, which Rotary refers to as the action plan. Anytime you're undertaking an effort at the club level, at a committee level, district committees, the more we can tie in our efforts to the language of Rotary's action plan, 
will naturally find ideas flowing in and energy flowing in and sometimes funding flowing in. Please collaborate with your district leaders. Mike Dillis, your very own, is your assistant governor. Randy as our uh, Polio Plus leader. Lynn as our public image chair. Look at what Madison, down, Madison um, South is doing for us. Thank you. But start with getting to know people. And so when we invite you to events, it's a great time to just get to know other Rotarians. Um, it was mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna have a very brief comment, but three um, efforts woven together led us to announce the Rotary Days of Environmental Service. One, President Shekar asked us to have days of service. Okay. Two, I, together with the other two district <laughs> governors in Wisconsin, which includes Michigan's UP and our own little slice of part of Minnesota, uh, we really love collaborating. And one thing that we're going to be collaborating at, on is our district conference, which we call TriCon for three districts. And uh, third, supporting the environment is the Rotary Foundation's newest area of focus. That means we can start granting for sustainable projects all around the world. And by the way, Madison is in the world. We can have global projects locally, just FYI. <clears throat> So thank you so much for participating. What we did as what we'll always do as a district is invite clubs into an effort. So some clubs are like, what? <laughs> After <laughs> what, you know, try to make pretty clear invitations and other clubs like yours are really um, stepping in. So we appreciate that. And this is not gonna end, right? It's just one moment in time and we'll continue to uh, work hard to support our environment. So last, just last week, we had our Vibrant Club workshop, so check. But just FYI, I left it on here because every fall, your district is going to host a Vibrant Club workshop. We might call it different things, but it's an opportunity for the presidents primarily to bring their key leaders into that collaborative uh, fellowship and idea sharing uh, in the district. Please like us and follow us on social media. Um, we have membership grants. So if you have new member efforts and um, uh, club growth efforts, you can earn a district grant. It's a great way. Our mission is to, the reason we exist is to strengthen and support you. And so that's a good way is for us to give you some money along the lines of what we're hoping that you'll be busy doing and you're probably doing it by the way. Uh, we're gonna have grant management seminars like we do every winter, they'll be virtual. If you're not the foundation chair or on the service committee, I invite you to come anyway. Uh, it was very eye-opening for me. I attended my first one after like 28 days of, uh, 28 years of Rotary uh, membership. And I thought, oh, and then we got a district grant. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have a, about a $30,000 district grant opportunity in winter and then another one in, in the typical timing in spring. So if you have a project going that fits with district granting, I don't think there'll be a lot of competition even though I'm telling everyone about it. So yeah. please think about it. And then finally, please join me and your fellow Rotarians at the Ostoff, Elkhart Lake. It's a long drive for many of us in 6250, but that's okay. We're part of a three district team and the Ostoff is very lovely. So taking action to create lasting change. Anytime we think about changing something, the globe, our community, or ourselves, we imagine us at ourselves at point A and we wanna to get to point B. And it takes a lot of energy to, to get to point B. And the more people we're trying to move, the more complicated it can be. But if we approach that place that we're trying to get with a servant's mind and a servant's heart, all that beautiful energy from Rotary um, ideals for mission and values will come with us. Instead of trying so hard to get done what I want to do, take self out of the center and have service <clears> of <throat> self. Then the solutions we come up with will be naturally sustainable and the work will be more fun. So the last uh, encourage, well not second from last encouragement is to be innovative. So I joined Rotary in 1989, and after not too much time, I considered myself a pauper among princes. And I was, kind of. I did not feel like I belonged. And so I left Rotary, of course I didn't, I wasn't honest about why. 
but I couldn't stand to be apart from it. I really want to be a Rotarian and I really wanted to further the mission. So I got over myself and I decided to come back to Rotary and give what I could give and open myself to what it is to be a Rotarian and open myself to lasting change. And the lessons haven't been easy or quick, just ask some of my Rotary fellows, but I do believe they've been lasting. So my last encouragement, Rotarian, don't give up. Thank you. So I'm happy to take questions, yes. Date and location of the district conference. The dates are April 29 and 30, Friday, Saturday. And the location is the Osthoff Elkhart Lake. And we're likely to have, we will have a um, foundation dinner beforehand. So probably by invitation only. So just open your wallets for polio. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, wanna, I don't want to be like that. But we're going to have a, a nice three district event too on Thursday night. It's only two hour drive from here, and it's pretty easy drive from here. Two, oh, only two yeah. hours. Only two hours. Big benefit of being Madisonian. <laughs> yes. So how many clubs are there now in our district, and how many members do we have? Just Yeah, we have 58 clubs and about 2,500 members. Okay. Um, some, so I'm super philosophical. And for me, like I can't, once I get started, I have a lot of energy, but I have to have vision. And so for the more concrete thinkers, they're like, oh gosh, do we have to talk philosophically again? I'm like, yeah, we do. So but after one of our meetings, uh, somebody raised their hand. Yeah, she said, can you say one concrete thing that you want to accomplish? <laughs> and I actually have a whole bunch of concrete goals, but for the district governor, that is shared with our team, the district team. And the goals that matter for you all are Aaron's, well, yours under Aaron's leadership. But one goal I have is plus 220 members. And FYI, we're on pace for 192. <laughs> but if everybody commits to yeah. joyful action, sharing a rotary life, no problem. You all know uh, past district governor Rob Stroud, when I shared uh, my goals with the past district governor, he said, those are remember the word right there. those are lofty goals and i'm like they're a breeze if everybody has an oar in the water i can't do it but they're a breeze if everyone has an oar in the water and it's a lot more fun okay th oh lynn um does rotary international have um have they done any planning for the next major thing that they want to tackle i know there's been a lot of things they tossed around. Yes, and the answer is always no, because we must end polio. So they're going which to is a disciplined answer, but guess what? They're moving into a lot of new partnerships. Um, one thing that they've uh, the foundation has uh, done <laughs> is uh, moved. I'm going to forget the partnership. You just say it, but ending uh, making a big impact on malaria. That's happening. And then we have grants of scale, $1 million, $2 million grants. Uh, listen, Madison is full of fine minds and great ideas. And if you're networking with anybody, please don't curb your imagination on what we can do. Please don't. We can just explore together. Lynn. Don't forget the temporary tattoos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, oh, okay. I, I'm always encouraging Rotarians to ask me, what have you done for me lately? And so since you haven't asked, I'll just tell you, we have two <laughs> things that are really important is we've established an international service committee at the <clears throat> district level and a brand new community service uh, committee at the district level. Now, why is that important? Because we want lots and lots of ways to connect uh, through Rotary with energy and ideas flowing in every direction, this way as in this way. And um, so please stay tuned. But it, it, for example, if you want to change the world, we have an international service committee who will guide you through how that happens. And we've got great staff at Rotary International too. Yes. So to Lynn's question about the next uh, 
global initiative. Uh, my girlfriend was born in Pakistan and she travels the world and she's had uh, dengue fever. And uh, everyone in this room has been sick, but uh, she says, she goes, oh my gosh, the stuff you're doing with polio is awesome. But the, the big thing that's kicking the world's butt is malaria, like you said. Yeah. So, and, you know, we've been working doing that already, malaria with Bill and Melinda Gates, but it's that stuff we, you know, we get bit by a mosquito in Madison in a mallard game. We're like, oh my gosh, the mosquitoes are up. Yeah. 85% of the world are just living in squalid, and they get, they get, they get malaria and they, they just die. Yeah. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Right. So we have a lot of initiatives going with a lot of different partnerships. And yeah. I'm, I'm not very good at reading the Rotary magazine. I hate to confess that. <laughs> but uh, if you like, can you even flip through it or read the table of contents, that would be a really quick way to access some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes. Uh, I've always thought that in the last many years, in fact, we lost a member, as I recall, to uh, this club on a mission to, I think it was El Salvador, to put in wells for people in areas that don't have running water. And uh, <clears throat> one of our members that's on Zoom today, son, actually formed, I think, one of the first personal commitments between Rotary and, and the World Health Organization in Central Africa hmm. to work together, which it's hard to do with those yeah. NGOs. To, to put I in think Rotarians are even hard to work with. Where he joined a grant from Rotary and a grant from WHO to, Wonderful. to put in a well. And, and yeah, oh, malaria, of course, one of the big problems that causes malaria is stagnant water. Oh, oh. And, and so water, I think, I always thought that would be the next major oh, focus right. of Rotary International. A lot of people have thought so, and it might be. <clears throat> Um, Wisconsin is going to play an active part in world water. We have so much of it, people are going to want it. Yeah, yeah. Great Lakes. We we're not selling right. it. So I've stopped you. Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, any questions from Zoom? I can see you now. I'm really glad this camera angle is kind of working for me. I failed to check. The <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's just the truth. <laughs> um, well, you, uh, Madison South Rotarians, have my uh, deep affection and uh, appreciation. Some of you have heard me say this, that you're a club. <laughs> and I really do uh, like everything you do and your approach. So well done. Thank you, Karen, for joining us. Yes, Jeff. I, I just hope you all uh, re realized or, or knew that Karen joined us for our first broad stand this season. Yes. I think that was, Ooh. you know, and coming from Chippewa Falls. That's not that far of a drive. We've had her twice now. <laughs> I drive that 10, I drive that 10 times a year. We've had her twice now in less than a month. And so I, I think this is this is, speaks well to her to her commitment and her support. But yeah, we appreciated her, her presence. Thanks. And, and when is the Euchre? Uh, fellowship starting again. <laughs> yeah, let's you've heard of that, baby. Well, I, I did mention there's another broad stand on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and the Embroidery Fellowship. I want to be a part of that. Euchre, you know, so. oh, for sure, we got to do that. So I just wanted to, sorry, one more thing. Uh, friends, I'm going to talk about these. So I have a very special place in my heart for behind the scenes folks, um, secretaries, treasurers. We say we're people of action, but we never take pictures of them acting. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. So I have just a simple little gift, but it's absolutely from my heart for your treasurer, your secretary, your brat czar, and Al. That's oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And so this is peace in many languages because international service is my particular favorite um, uh, avenue of service. It's also shaped in the peace dove, which is the um, symbol of our foundation. Peace Fellows, and if you don't know about that, that you're doing for the world, well done. And then there's a final, oh, because Peace and Conflict Resolution really is my favorite area of focus. So anyway. Thank you so yeah, much. Sure thing. Yeah. And for uh, there, for your leadership. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say thank you for your leadership in the district and in Rotary and for being here and sharing with us today. Um, we, as you may know, make a donation on behalf of all of our speakers to the Empolio Now 
uh, campaign as part of Rotary International. So we will make a contribution in your name for that as well. Thank you. That's Thank the you. best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so with that, we will uh, ask Dan, who our speaker is next week, before I hang the gavel. Yeah.